Okay, chapter 2.3, we're gonna talk about satellites, artificial satellites. Now, a natural satellite of our Earth is the moon, but there's a lot of other things up there other than just our moon. In fact, what I love to do at night is when it's a, a, a clear night and you can see all the stars, what I do is I go outside and I watch for satellites and they're all over. How do you tell the difference between a satellite and a plane? Satellites don't have blinking lights and they travel a lot faster through the sky. You got to be looking. Uh, they're not giving off any light. What happens is the light from the sun or a reflection from the moon gives them light. And so you, they're pretty faint, but you can see them and they're, they're hauling major booty through, the, through uh, our solar system and our space. So we're going to compare two types of satellites and we're going to discuss how they're used. Let's get started. Okay, so a satellite, any object that goes around another object. So if it's in orbit to an object that has more mass, then it's a satellite. And so um, there are hundreds and hundreds of them up uh, in our sky that are going around and they do all sorts of things. And they're in different orbits and, and all of them are, are set out there to where they don't crash into each other. Um, they do break down sometimes and, and then they come down and we'll talk about that too. So we talk about different examples of things that we use satellite for. So XM radio, I use that all the time on my truck. Um, GPS, no question about that. This comes in handy. Uh, weather, just looked at the weather on my phone a couple minutes ago and that's a signal that's going to uh, a satellite that allows us to turn on things up or determine what's going on. And then uh, think about this, spies use satellites all the time. They're always checking on things. Our TV, our cell phone, we use satellites all the time. And so um, when you think about satellites, there's two basic orbits. There's two types. One, geosynchronous. Geo means Earth. Synchronous is like those swimmers, geosynchronous, right? It's going over one location directly over um, an area, geosynchronous. It's stationed right over the top of a, of a place. Uh, it's moving in the same direction as our Earth and our rotation, right? And so um, it rotates around the Earth every 24 hours, but it stays in the exact same, same place. That can be useful in a lot of ways, right? And so we think about what's it used for? Well, communication. I bounce a signal up to a, up to a tower, over to a tower, up to the satellite, down to another tower, back into my cell phone, right? So um, perfect for communication, weather. If we wanna look at the weather over a particular area, that makes sense. We're looking directly down at that area. A polar orbit. So a polar orbit is going this way around the earth, right? Not this way, this is geosynchronous, so it's rotating the same speed as the earth. But this one is going. So what does that do? Well, every time the Earth is spinning, by the way, this is hard. As it's spinning, it's going over a different place on the Earth every time it goes around. And so we think about the Google map or the Google Earth and all that. Um, a satellite has done that. And so eventually, if you go around enough, you can map out every place on the Earth, and that's what it does. So it moves around the earth. And we use this for a lot of things, including mapping the earth um, and, and seeing what features are out there and what resources are there. What I'd like you to do is take, take a pause. I want you to watch two orbits, one earth, and I'll get back when you, when you hit start again. Okay, you're back. Cool. I hope you enjoyed that. Very cool. So let's talk about how satellites move. Satellites move just like our moon, right? Just like Earth around the sun, right? So when we think about, we have two types of orbits. Again, we're slightly elliptical. They're not a perfect circle. And so basically they come a little bit closer and a little bit further away. Those two types, perigee, closest to the Earth. Now, think about this. Um, it is where we are like a slingshot going around the earth. And um, the closer we get to the earth, the faster we move in the orbit. Apogee 
is the furthest away. Now, it's not a great distance, right? I mean, it's not that big of a difference. But the further out it is, the slower it moves. And it gets around, and, and it's not that pronounced, but um, it travels slower. So um, if we think about uh, when we talked about the Earth, aphelion and perihelion, A away still works. Apogee, A away. It's furthest away, right? Um, again, when we talk about the moon, these same terms apply. Apogee, perigee. All right, so if we look at the Earth and we're using satellites, a couple of things that we do are look at what's going on in our area. Landsat, perfect example. Um, they allow, they follow a polar orbit, so they go around, and they're collecting information about our, work, our world, and they're sending it back to uh, us down the ground, and it's used for all sorts of things. Um, looking at Earth, how much water is in the moisture of the soil, um, how much crop has been planted, uh, at, you know, uh, laying out a city, all of these things, how fast is water flowing uh, through the cycle on Earth, you know. So Landsat works extremely good at picking up and relaying data of what's going on. Now, GPS is kind of interesting, global positioning, right? So we use that, and we use it in almost everything, cars, planes, trains, anything you can think of. And what is it doing? It's navigating. And so... It picks up a position and says, you are here. Makes sense. Now, what I wanted you to do is take a minute, watch how does GPS work? And then when you're done, hit play again. Great, all right, we're back. So when we looked at, what we did, what did we find? We found that it pinpoints locations on the earth. Farming uses this unbelievably Right? What do they do? They can now have precision planting because their tractor and their planter can get right down even closer than meters. It can get down uh, even to centimeters. Now, doesn't really need to be that accurate. Half a meter. Military uses this as well. How about this? OnStar. Click. Uh, when you push that button in your car, it sends a signal to satellite and then somebody who let's say you locked your keys in the car somebody at, at at OnStar headquarters can unlock the door of your car could start your car right so it's pretty cool all right so there you have it artificial satellites exciting we got through that great job I can't say thank you enough you guys are awesome and uh, we will Catch you on the next one.